All right. Hi, everyone. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Miss Fu, your physics teacher. In this video, I am going to go through the answers to Chapter 1 to Gasan 2 in this module workbook. Now, I'm not here to share the questions. I'm just here to share the answers. If you'd like to get hold of the questions, please go and buy this book. I am not promoting this book. Uh, I'm not actually making sales for, or any commission from the sales of this book, okay? Um, but the reason I'm going through the answers here is because this is the book that we are currently using in the class. And I believe that this video, um, my students find this video helpful to figure out the answers to the questions that they are working on. So um, one of the reasons why I'm doing this video as well is because now I do have the teacher's edition. So there's answers in here. And I'm sure that some students can get a hold of the answers as well. But the problem is we found that uh, as we were working the questions, a lot of the answers in here are incorrect. So that's why I'm coming up with this video to um, come up with the answers that are as correct as possible based on what I can see from the question. So this is a re-release re -release of this uh, answer uh, answers for this question by the way because uh, the earlier video i did was uh, based on the answers that were given in this book uh, with some slight modification but on, upon further examination we found that the answers are not correct so that's why i'm releasing this video if you've seen that video uh, throw it out watch this video if you haven't seen it no need okay so we're working on the answers um on page 17 and 18 chapter one of forces and motion to gasan two what I have here in this Jamboard is I already have the diagrams over here, but not the questions. You're supposed to go get the book and work on the questions yourself. Okay, so let's discuss. Uh, let's go straight to the answers now. So this is a diagram from question 1A. And what we need to work on is to find the horizontal and vertical components of this force F, which is acting at an angle. So how to solve. So remember that when you want to resolve the forces, you are actually looking for Fx and Fy. To do that, we need to get the right angle triangle. So here's the angle. Let's create the triangle over here. Whoops, let me draw it a bit better. So let's make this our Fx and our change color. Let's use green and this is our Fy. So now, as you can see, this is the right angle triangle, right? And this angle 30 is over here. So to solve Fx, let's see, Fx is opposite to the angle. So using what we know about trigonometry, so katua, we have fx, which is the adjacent, sorry, opposite over f, which is the hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse is, that's right, sine, sine theta. So bringing this up, fx can be solved with f sine theta. Substituting the values in, 100 sine 30, sine 30 is half, that gives us 50 newton. So that's how we solve fx. fy is adjacent. So fy over f, this is adjacent over hypotenuse. And adjacent over hypotenuse is, that's right, cos. So bringing, bringing f up, you get fy equals f cos theta. That's 100 cos 30. Um, working it out, let's rest my calculator. Um, okay. Yeah, I've already worked it out just now. It's 86.60 Newton. So these are the answers for the horizontal and vertical component. I'm trying to underline it and the underline is not happening. Okay, yeah. So by the way, the uh, question in the book has asked you to express this in OX and OY form. So this is OX and this is OY. Now, some students uh, prefer to memorize fx as f cos theta and f sine theta, but you'll find that this doesn't quite work because, wait a minute, why? Oh, and that's because the angle is at a different location. So just for this, I am going to redo this question. Um, let's create another blank slide over here. Right? And if you want to use the shortcut of f cos theta and f sine theta, that means this and this, you can, but you must make sure that your theta is the angle that is between the force and the horizontal. That means this one. So if this is 30, 90 minus 30, this is 60. So if you solve this, you would get 100. Whoops. 
10 is not cooperating. 100 cos 60. So cos 60 is half, you get 50 Newton. If you solve F sine theta, that means you substitute the values 100 sine 60. Sine 60 is 0 0.866, that gives you 86.6 Newton. And if you compare, you'll still get the same answer. Because as long as you use the correct angle and the correct uh, functions of sine and cos, you will get the correct answers. And that's how you solve question 1a. Moving on to the next question. This is question 1b. So for this, you can't use the angle of 130 because, you know, uh, like how, right? So you need to get the triangle, which is in this case, over here. So we're going to drop this down. I'm going to draw an fx over here. And this is our FY. So you need to find the value of the angle over here. 130 is this way. So 180 minus 130, you get 50 degrees. So here's our triangle, you can see. So FX is adjacent, right? So adjacent over hypotenuse, that's cos. Uh, we'll just use F cos theta straight away. F cos theta, that means it's 200 cos 50. And that gives us, let me um, pull out my calculator. I'm just going to work this off screen. You don't have to see my calculation on screen. Okay, So this gives us 128.56. So this is the value of fx. But the question asks us for ox. That means they want us to determine the value of fx in the direction of ox. It's written in the book this way, and because fx is in the opposite direction of um, fx, or rather the other way, fx is in the opposite direction of ox, you need to put negative. So the answer is negative 1 to 8.56 Newton. Fy is the opposite, so opposite of a hypotenuse is sine, right? So we can just use the shortcut f sine theta, substituting the values in 200 sine 50, working that out we get in times 200, we get 153.21. So that's 153.21. So if any of you have the uh, answer scheme on the book, you'll find that they have rounded up to no decimal place. Um, in SPM, you must write up to uh, at least two or three decimal places if there are any. If there's only one, you write one, but if the number if there are many numbers at the back, you must put up to two or three decimal places. Okay, don't don't drop the decimal places altogether. Okay, SPM plus plus plus. Okay. All right, let's go to one C. Okay, so for one C, seventy degrees is here, so the triangle would be this way. So that means your FX is here, and your FY is here. Oops. Okay, FY. And that's not straight. Okay, Fy. So the angle is here. So Fx adjacent, right? So you can actually use a, the F cos theta formula because adjacent over hypotenuse is cos, right? So that's that comes out to F cos theta. So this is 400 cos 70. That gives us... I'm just punching the numbers in to an off-screen calculator. And that gives us 136.81. I'm just checking against the book. Um, so the number is almost there, so it's correct. Where's my pen? Okay. Whoops. <laughs> the pen disappeared from screen. 136.81 with them. Something's wrong with the pen. Because I can't see the... I can't see the... Screen. I can't see the where the pen position is. Okay, there it is. So, F, Fy, therefore, would be F sine theta, because it's opposite, right? Opposite of a hypotenuse sine, right? So 400 sine 70, and that gives us... Again, I'm just calculating it. 375.88. Okay, and there we go. Okay, in this case, so I'm just going to backtrack because I wrote here OX and I didn't mention OY. So here, OX is negative because it's opposite, FX is opposite to OX, but OY, um, FY is in the same direction as OY. So you don't have to put this as negative, this is still positive. In 1C though, 
Okay, you can see fx is in the same direction as um, ox, so it's fine to leave ox as positive. But here, oy is going up, but fy is going down. That means the value for oy should be negative. So it should be negative 375.88. So that's why we write negative, because it is negative to the directions that the question wants us to express it. Right, so that's question one. Now let's look at question two. So this is question two, and question two is asking us for the effective horizontal and vertical forces. So uh, before we do that, let's solve f first. Uh, not solve, sorry, resolve fx and fy. So if f is a hundred and alpha is uh, actually we don't have to resolve. Let's let's just sorry. Let me let me do this this way. Sorry, <laughs> look at me. So the first question is asking us for the effective horizontal Force. For the effective horizontal force, we need to find all the forces that are acting horizontally. So we have G, we can ignore this, and uh, we find, oh, F is at an angle. You need to find the F component uh, in the X direction. So we're going to find Fx. So Fx angle is here, adjacent over hypotenuse, right? So you, or you can work it out. Fx over 100 equals to adjacent over hypotenuse cos, cos 40. Therefore, Fx equals to 100 cos 40, which gives us... Oops, let me... Just punching it into the off-screen calculator. 76.60 Newton. So 76.60 Newton. 76.6. So you see, right? You take look at the horizontal forces, you need to take the larger minus the smaller. So the effective horizontal force would be 76.6 minus 20, giving us 56.60 Newton. So now that you know how to solve the effective horizontal force, you can also solve the effective vertical force. So I'm just going to create, uh, I think, oh, I already have that over here. Okay, yep, here. So, we are. <laughs> I don't want to type so much, so I'm just going to copy and paste stuff. This vertical force, and in the same vein, what we need to do is we need to find the vertical component of F, which is this time acting upwards, right? Oops, I might as well just roll with it. So this is Fy. So Fy over F, opposite over hypotenuse, right? So opposite over hypotenuse is sine. So that's sine 40. What you'll get is Fy equals to bringing F up, F sine 40, 100 sine 40, and that gives us... Sixty-four point two eight. Okay, so this is not five gram. This is five g, where g is the gravitational acceleration of nine point eight one meters per second squared. Um, don't use ten. The in fact, the answer scheme writes ten. You're not supposed to use ten because in KSSM you need to use a value of g as nine point eight one. So make that a habit. Don't use ten. Ten is for the old KBSM syllabus or for IGCSE. For you guys, okay, G is 9.81, so effective vertical force would be 64.28 minus 5 times 9.81, which is 15.23 Newton. This is the answer for the effective vertical force. Okay, and there you go. All right, this brings us to question 1C. So, eh, 1C pula apa cakap? It's 1B. <laughs> Sorry, 1B. 1B also has two parts, 1B1 and 1B2. So, for 1B1, the question only asks us to find value of theta, fx, fy, and r. But for the purposes of solving this question, it's uh, we're going to... Um, solve some extra, extra values first. In fact, um, 
the book solved it wrongly. They solved WX and put it as FX. So you can see there's an F here, there's a W here. They're actually two different forces. So let's solve them all. Let's find WX and WY as well. Uh, we'll solve R in the next slide. So let's solve these first, theta. So you can see over here, let me use a different color. Okay, we're looking for this theta. Okay, how to solve? This is 30, you can see there's a triangle here. This is 90, so this is 60, correct? This is um, 90 degrees. So 90 minus 60, that's how you get 30 degrees. Okay. Now for fx, fx is actually based on f. So this is fx. So f cos theta or 100 cos 40. I think that's the same number as earlier. So we're going to um, just take the number from before, which are 76 0.60 Newton. That's not, then let me fix that. Newton. And then for Fy, this is Fy. Fy is F sine theta, which is 100 sine 40. And I think we solved it earlier, right? Why am I going back so far? 100 sine 40 is 64.28. So this is 64.28 Newton. Now for Wx and Wy, if you uh, don't remember the shortcut, please watch the video on inclined planes. Okay, the shortcut is Wx equals to W sine theta, where theta is the angle of incline. So W, which is 5g, 5.5, sorry, 5 times 9.81 sine 30 degrees. This gives us, let me just quickly solve it. Sine 30 is actually half, isn't it? Okay, times 5 times 9.81, that gives us 24.525. 24.525 Newton. I think there's not much space there, so I'm just going to move my face out of the way so that there's space to write, otherwise I'm just going to squash my words there. So let's put WY on this side. So WY is equal... If Wx is W sine theta, Wy, which is perpendicular, has to be cos. So this gives us 5 times 9.81 cos 30 degrees. Okay, working this out. Okay, again, I'm just uh, punching it into my off-screen calculator. This gives us 42.48. Okay, so um, so these are the values for theta, fx, fy, wx, and wy. Now, um, to solve R and the resultant force is not so straightforward. In fact, uh, this question has a problem. And that's why I am releasing this video. So, if we look at the normal reaction, the normal reaction is in this direction. So, most people would think R is equal to WY, but it's not. You've got another FY over here. So I'm going to do this on another slide. Okay, and I'm just going to add FY over here. FY is 64.28. And let's put in a value of WY as well. WY is 42.48. So here's the problem. You cannot just put R equals to W because you've got another force that's in the same direction as the reaction force, which means the correct way to solve R, provided that it's balanced, is, use blue color, R plus Fy equals to WY. But it doesn't make sense because if you look at the values, you would have R plus 64.28 equals to 42.48. And you work it out, you will get negative 21.8 Newton. This number doesn't make sense because normal reaction cannot be negative. Normal reaction is always supposed to be um, opposite to the force acting on it, right? So it's supposed to be acting upwards. But if it's 21.8, means that it's actually trying to act downwards. And that doesn't make sense. So if you look at what's happening, you have an upward force of 64.28 and a, a downward force of 42.48. This object is actually going to be lifted upwards in this direction. There is no normal reaction. So that's why um, I'm releasing this video to let you know this is actually the correct answer if, if the normal reaction was balanced. But because this number doesn't make sense, what this tells us actually is that there is 
no normal reaction force. The object will move upwards in the direction of Fy. So let me just make this look nicer, lah, okay? Yeah. So this is um an issue with the question. In fact, the answer scheme here is all wrong. Okay, just just to let you know. So this cannot exist. So I'm just going to mark here. This does not exist. Okay, we're just gonna indicate that. Okay, it does not does not not does not exist. Not possible. Impossible answer. All right. So. But what happens is it will create a reaction, sorry, reaction, it will create a resultant force upward. So let's solve the resultant force question um, based on this understanding now. So to solve the resultant force, what I'm going to do now to make this clear is I'm going to put in all the values that we've calculated just now. So we have uh, let's see, Wx, which is sorry, 24.525. So this is 24.52. Oops, wrong slide. Sorry. 24.525 Newton. Wy, um, 42.48. 42.48 Newton. And then we have Fx. Whoops, <laughs> that's not a straight line. Fx over here, which is... 76.6. So I'm going to put it here. 76.60 Newton. And we have an Fy over here. I'll just write it on top here. Fy, which is 64.28. And uh, we will ignore W because it has been, uh, you know, we can take out W and replace it with Wx, Wy, but we cannot ignore G. So there's G of 20 Newton, so this still counts. We will ignore R because as we saw in the earlier slide, this is uh, impossible. There's actually no normal reaction. So what this tells us is, if you see, ignoring R, so let me just <laughs> wipe it out, okay? Ta-da, okay, ta-da, so I'm just wiping it out. Okay, ta-da, ta-da, ta-da. So what you have here is a uh, force acting upwards, uh, counted by Wy. That means if I were to draw it out, you have a force in this direction. Yeah, I just redraw the object. Rotate it. Okay. So what we have is the force acting upwards this way. I'll put the calculation over here. That means in this direction, you have F. Let me just indicate here lah, huh? so that you can see. Fy minus Wy. Because upwards is more than downwards. This is 64.28 minus 42.48, which gives us 21.8 Newton. So this is 21.8 Newton. And then if you look at um, the forces that are parallel to the inclined plane, we have three forces, Fx going up at 76.60, and then Wx at 24.525, and G at 20. So if you look at it overall, this value is still more than this, which means that the force, mm -hmm. resultant force is going to act upwards this way. Fx is more, right? So it will minus Wx and minus G. That gives us 76.60 minus 24.525. 2, 5 minus 20, giving us, okay, uh, the metal net's not so strong for this. So 76.6 minus 24.525 minus 20, that gives us 32.075. So I'm going to write that here, 32.075 Newton. That means we will have an upward force, well, not upward, um, upward, up the incline in this direction at uh, upwards, I mean, sorry, upwards at, with a value of 32.075 Newton. So the resultant force would be in between. Let me put this to the next slide. I don't want to redraw, so I've just copied and pasted. So we've got a force this way. That means if you want to solve it, you can use triangle method or the um, parallelogram method as we learned in the earlier topic of 1.1. Your resultant force would be here. 
So to solve the value of the resultant force, R, you can use the Pythagoras theorem of square root 21.8 squared plus 32.075 squared. Okay, I'm going to use my calculator for this. So we have... Where's the squared button? There we go. Plus 21.8 squared. And we will square root this answer. 38.78 to Newton. And this is the answer for the magnitude of the resultant force. If we had to find the angle, which is, the, oops, <laughs> never mind, just going to go with it. <laughs> okay, so theta, you can sol solve this using, um, again, uh, Sokatoa. In this case, we use tangent. So tangent theta equals to 21.8 over 32.075. This gives us 0 0.68. So the value of theta would be 34.2 zero degrees. And this is the answer for the resultant force in terms of its magnitude and angle based on this question. So it's vastly different from the answer scheme, but that's the answer um, that I can see which is correct based on all information given in this question. Right, so I hope you found this video educational and helpful. Okay, uh, don't forget to click like and subscribe so that you can get more updates. You can get updates on uh, when I'll release more videos on working out the questions in this book and even other worksheets, right? Okay, happy studying! Hey, get away. Yeah, not used to... Yeah, okay, go, 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 this way, this way, yeah, this way, this way, yeah, yeah. Physics rocks, I should probably do this, yeah, physics rocks.